Psalm 95. Let's, uh, let's read Psalm 95, and then we'll read Psalm 100, and then we'll, we'll read Psalm 147. Because I couldn't decide which one to read. So I, I was like, well, we'll just read them all. Because <laughs> they're all good. And they all have the word Thanksgiving in them. All right, Psalm 95. We'll start with that one, okay? Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, and proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Okay, now let's go over to Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. All right, now let's go over to 147. Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifted up the meek, he cast the wicked down to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praise upon the heart of our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains, he giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse, he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders, and filled thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth, his word running very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool, he scattered the poor frost like ashes, he casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sent out his word, and he melted them. He caused his wind to blow, and the waters flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. What a great God. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings to reading his word today. And I'm just so thankful to be here with you on this uh, Thanksgiving Sunday. And uh, what a wonderful passage of Scripture here. Descriptions about our God. Amen? Amen. He's, a, he's a great God, isn't He? Amen. And we just, uh, we can't uh, say enough about Him. He's just, he's just so wonderful. But these verses certainly do give us a, a good description. Uh, just to, to go back and review just a little bit here. If you recall, back in Psalm 95, verse 2 there, where it talked about thanksgiving that first time. It says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise in him with psalms. You need to do it first thing in the morning, amen? That's right. We need to sing to God. Amen. Make sure you sing to God. Amen. Come before his presence with singing. Right. Amen. With thanksgiving. That's good. Singing and making a joyful noise in him. First thing in the morning. Yeah. Whether you feel like it or not. Because some, some days you're not gonna not gonna feel like it. That's right. But you need to do it anyway. Amen. Amen. Psalm 100 verse 4 it said, "Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name." I believe this has to do with uh, 
proclaiming the Lord before the lost or in public, in public places. Where we go, we need to be thankful to God and bring up the Lord in conversation with people. Right? Uh, talk about a beautiful day. Include God in that because God made the beautiful day. Don't just say, man, what a nice day. Sometimes we'll say that, right? Yeah. Yeah. How about, yeah. isn't it a beautiful day God made? Yeah. Just throw that in there. Yeah. You know? Because it extols Him. Yeah. It lifts Him up. It praises Him. Into his, into his gates with thanksgiving. Not only do we do it in private or in our own homes, but we do it outside too. Yeah. Lift Him up. Amen? Amen? He's worthy. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. And then uh, 147, I like uh, verse 1 there again where it said, uh, Praise you, Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. It's, it's very becoming to a Christian to praise God. Much more becoming than murmuring and complaining like we dealt with on Thursday night. It's not very becoming. God help us and God forgive us for complaining and That's how right. it, it, it just rises up, you know, oh, so quickly yeah. sometimes, yeah. you know, and yeah. this flesh. I know we're still in this flesh, we're still in this body, and our, our body still experiences everything in this life, you know, all the troubles yeah. and the trials of life. And that part of salvation doesn't change. I mean, you're, you're still the same regarding. Uh, you know, your physical state of this life. You know, you're still going to get sick. You're still going to get cold. You're still going to stub your toe. And, you know, Christians still, you know, have troubles like that. They still experience the things of this life that are troublesome. But they have Jesus now. Amen. And quickly when we do do wrong or we do start thinking wrong or complaining or murmuring, with the Holy Spirit of God should arrest your heart, yes. you know? That's right. And like we were talking about that conscience, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Spirit of God is like that now, yeah. and right. He helps us, right, to correct our way very quickly Amen. and to get back in the yes. way and say, so, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's that's a bad attitude. Right. That's not right." You know, right. I got I got to change yeah. it. Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me. You know. Um, yes, praise. Praise is coming. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. That's good. Um, sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise. Upon the harp of our God. Thanksgiving and praise go together. Do you notice that in Scripture? Yeah. A lot of times we find thanks or thanksgiving or being thankful, you'll find the word praise. They go hand in hand. They're like brother and sister. Amen. So, some things to be thankful for. Some things to be thankful for this morning. Uh, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Of course, we've got a lot to be thankful for, but let's just look at a few things together. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Short little verse. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. The gift of God gift of Christ, the gift of, the gift of salvation, right. eternal life, the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is that worth? Amen. How do you begin to ex describe how wonderful it is right. to experience God's salvation? Right. We could stand here all day yeah. and not fully describe how so wonderful true. it is. So That's why it says it's his unspeakable gift. Unspeakable. It's not speakable. You yeah, couldn't. No. Yeah. You can't speak. You can't describe it. No. It's better felt than tell. Amen. I know that doesn't make any grammar uh, sense, but uh, you kind of get the idea. Uh, yeah, you you've got to feel it. You've got to know it. You've got to experience yourself to really begin to. And even we don't fully grasp, you know, how wonderful it is. We're all growing, right? Yeah. None of us right. have arrived, and we're still, yeah. you know, getting to know God and, and growing in this. But uh, doesn't it get sweeter Amen. as the day goes by? Yes. Doesn't it get yes. sweeter yes. year by year? Yes. It does. He does. Yes. yes. You know? It's, yeah. just, it's wonderful. Yeah. 
again, not saying that I've arrived, and none of us have, but um, we, we want to draw closer to God. We want to be more like Christ, and we're growing in this, and it's exciting. It's an exciting thing. Standard religion is not exciting. Very boring, actually. Same old, same old. But Jesus, oh, it's different. We're getting to know His person. Right. You know? He's wonderful. Amen. That's exciting. Yes, it is. Amen. Oh yes, some things to be thankful for. God's unspeakable gift. It had to be a gift. Yeah. It's priceless. You know, I say that best things are you know things you can't buy or. Things that are free, right? They're the best things in life. Yeah. Certainly true about salvation. I, mean, I couldn't afford it. No. You know, it's priceless. Yeah. So it had to be a gift. Yeah. Must be given. Yeah. That's why religion has it all wrong. Yeah. Working your way to heaven, you know, trying to be a good person. I hope I'll make it. I think I'll make it. I don't know. I don't know. And uh, just trusting in themselves or trusting in their, you know, being a good person and good deeds. Right. But uh, no, no that, won't, that won't do it. Yeah. We couldn't earn it. How could you earn salvation? How could you earn eternal life? What is that worth? There is no way, no way possible. <laughs> None of us could meet God's standard. His standard is perfection. You know? Some of us might get closer than others, but we still won't make it. For all have sinned and come short, short of the glory of God. You know? If the requirement to be a police officer is you got to be five foot eleven, you know, and you got to weigh at least 160 pounds. And you know, if you're just one pound short or one or a half an inch short, well, you don't make it. Yeah. It's just you don't make it. That's right. None of us make it. Yeah. None of us are good enough. Amen. All have sinned. Amen. It must be a gift. Yeah. It is a gift. I'm so glad it is. Yeah. I'm so glad it's available for everyone. Yeah. Even those of us that have done really bad things. Yeah. You know? And uh, so far from God, and yet He loved us. That's good. Another thing to be thankful for, let's go over to 1 Corinthians, back uh, a little bit here, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you thankful for the victory that we have in the Lord? Victory over sin. Victory over the world. The pull of the world. Victory over our own flesh. Right? This body that we're still in. Victory over the devil and the influences of the devil. The power of the devil. Not that we're stronger in and of ourselves than the devil, but through Christ we are. Yeah. He gives us the victory. Yes, right. It's through Him. And every day, amen, we can walk in this victory. Notice verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, the Lord, we can abound in this victory. Amen. We can continue in the victory. God wants us to go in the promised land and go from victory unto victory. Amen. New battle unto New battle and overcoming and victorious. And, right? This is God's plan. Amen. For us to wander the wilderness and still keep battling the same things over and over as we saw there on Thursday night, that's not God's will. That's not the life of, or should be a life of a believer. I know believers can be there and, and they can be in the wilderness and they can be wandering around in circles. And, but it's not God's will, though. Don't think this is normal. Right, right. Don't think that, well, this is just me, yeah, I know. and I, I can never get over there where those other Christians right. are. Well, you're just lying to yourself, or you're, you're accepting a lie, you're believing a lie from the devil. Yeah. Don't believe that, Christian. Amen. Any one of us, all of us can have the victory. We can go yes. on the promised land. That's God right. wants us to. Right. Amen. He wants you to live in the victory. Amen. Thank God for the victory. Amen. And then something else, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Something else to be thankful for. We have so much. Amen. But something else here. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 2. We give thanks to God always for y'all. Is that what it said? <laughs> for you all. Making mention of you in our prayers. I've heard people say, I don't have to go to church. I can worship God anywhere. I can worship God out outdoors. I don't need to go to church. You don't want to go to church? Right. When you get born again, you want to be with God's people. Yes. So you love God's people. Yes. You love God's family. Yeah. Yeah. You may not always see eye to eye. You may have some differences from time to time. Yeah. But there's a love there that's so real. That's you know, and so deep and so strong. And I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Uh, closer to you guys than I am many of my own family. I mean, I, I love them, and we, you know, we have something in common in that. But uh, I can't talk to them about the Lord a lot of them because we're still lost, and, and so we, yeah, don't have a, a really close relationship. A lot of them, uh, but the people of God, it's it's so sweet. You know, yes. we'll be together forever. Yeah, you know, yeah. we'll be buds forever. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> You'll never get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good or bad? But, uh, just thank God for allowing me to be a part of His family. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Got brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes. You know, and family forever. Not just family for here and now yeah. in this life, right. and then that's it. But yeah. forever. Yeah. That's sweet. That's very precious. Amen. That's a wonderful thing. Yes. Sometimes people in this life, their family gets mad at them, doesn't talk to them or whatever for years or yeah. whatever, you know. Or they write each other off and it just, it's, it's terrible. You know? yeah. It's horrible. But God's people don't do that, you know. I mean, if if there's something between us, we need to talk. Yeah. 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 That's the first step, you know. That's good. If I've offended you, and I may not even realize I've offended you. It's interesting how this just fits in the message. But you're to go to that brother or go to that sister, right? That's 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 the way to handle it. Don't hold inside because you're just going to hurt yourself and then hurt others because your your spirit's not going to be right. And you have a sour spirit. So. Get it right. Just, yeah, go to that brother. Go to that sister. If they won't listen to you, then you take the next step. Right. Hopefully you don't have to go that far. <laughs> I would say in most cases you don't. Yeah. I would say in most cases if you go to that brother right. or sister, you work it out, and that, that's where it ends. That's right. yeah. You know, and things come back together, you know. Yeah, that's good. But, uh, yeah, there's procedures for handling these right. things. And, and so that... Uh, don't allow Satan to get in the midst and, and cause division amongst right. us. God's all about unity. Yes, yes. So true. That's so true. Yes, sir. Heaven will be a very unified place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why when the angels didn't agree with God any longer, he said, Yeah. Yes, get out of here. Right. Right. It's got to be unity. Yes. Must be unity. Yeah. Yeah. Even the angels have a free will. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Is he a good guy? Yes. He really is fair. Yeah. He's just. Yeah. He's tough. You know, when it comes to things that are right. Yeah. But he's fair. He's a good yeah. God. God's people, something to be thankful for. I'm thankful for you today. And then go to Revelation chapter 11. Something else. Revelation chapter 11. Here we are in the future, around the throne of God. We have the four and twenty elders before the throne. And they say in chapter 11, verse 17, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, 
which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. <coughs> Read verse 18 as well. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. God's wrath will come. Time of judgment. Time of the dead, and that they should be judged. That thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints. That's you. Right. And them that fear thy name, small and great. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. Doesn't matter what your IQ is. <laughs> and thou shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Revelation is an exciting book. Okay? Yeah. Maybe one day we'll go through it. Right. Yeah. We'll do a study in Revelation. Wouldn't that be exciting? Yeah. Yeah. I would like to do that. It's, it's a deep book. Yeah. Uh, but here, God himself and all that he is. Let's give thanks unto him today. Yeah. I like how they put that. We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come. Yeah. What a God. Amen. He's my champion. Yeah. The world has their champions. Yeah. They have their favorite ball players, or they have their favorite yeah. actors, or movie stars, and yeah. musicians, or whatever. But my champion is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Jesus. Good. What a God. Yeah. I couldn't, uh, couldn't have couldn't have thought up a better God. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't have designed a better God or came up with a, you know? He's perfect. Yeah. He's absolutely perfect. You'd want him to be tough and, and to love righteousness and what's right. Even though at times that might be a little scary because we don't always do what's right. But you want him to be that way. We really do. We want him to be that way. Because then we know he's, he's all good. That's right. Yeah. In him is all light. Amen. In him is no darkness at all. There's no yin yang with God. No. There's no yin yang. Yeah. Right? He's all light. Yes, he is. He has no mixture. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's not going to deceive us. Right. Say, oh, I'm really this mean God. I, I tricked you. Oh, yeah. no. Never. Yeah, yeah. He is what so he good. is. Amen. He is perfect. He is perfection. In every way. Oh. Thankful for who he is. Amen. I love who he is. Yeah. He's wonderful. Wonderful God. I can't brag on him enough today. Yeah. Amen. I enjoy bragging on him. Can you tell? Yeah. I love bragging on my Jesus. Yeah. Oh, he's the real thing. Yeah. He's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Something else. Let's uh, look at something further. If you go to Hebrews chapter 13, about being thankful here. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Notice what it says. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Notice we see praise and thanks here in the same verse. Sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. We're to do what we're doing this morning continually. I don't yeah. do it enough. I need right. to do it continually. Amen. I do it sometimes. I do it now and then. Right. I would say most mornings I wake up singing. Yeah. Do I, girls? I mean, yeah. maybe not every morning. Most mornings, yeah. though. Yeah. I just have a song in my heart. I, I sing to God. I need to do it every morning. I need to do it continually throughout the day, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Given a sacrifice of praise. He's worthy of that. Amen. Be thankful all the time. Offering up this offering of praise unto God. Colossians goes right along with this. Colossians chapter 4. And notice what it says there in verse number 2. Colossians 4 2. That's one reason why you have breath. <laughs> one of the main reasons you have breath. So you can praise God. It's not so you can tell other people off. <laughs> if that's what you were thinking. Yeah. No, it's to praise.
praise Him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Use this breath to praise God. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. Colossians 4, verse 2 says, Continue in prayer continually, right? All the time. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. Thankful. Continually. Now look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse number 20. This takes it a bit further. Ephesians 5 verse 20. Giving thanks always. We've looked at that. Continually. And we say amen. 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 Now can you say amen for the next phrase? For all things. Amen. Unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to work on giving thanks all the time. Amen. I need to work on it. Yeah. That's good. At the same time, understand what the scripture is saying for all things. God even uses the bad things that happen in life Amen. sometimes to draw us closer to Him. Amen. We know what the Bible says in Romans 8.28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them that are called, they called according to His purpose. We know this is true. And so, we should do this. Knowing that God is going to use anything and everything that happens to us in this life we love Him, we're the call, the coin of His purpose, it's going to be for our good. Yep. Amen. Even in these days, and what we're going through. And 1 Thessalonians goes right along with this verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. In everything give thanks. In every season of life, no matter what you're going through, give thanks. You can always be thankful. Right? Don't focus on the negative like Miss Eva says she tends to do. She has a tendency to do. Maybe you are that way as well. The glass is always half empty instead of half full. Some people are like that. Be thankful. There's always something you can be thankful for. Always. It could always be worse. Yeah, you could always be in jail. Yeah. You could you could be dead. Your life could be over. God forbid you'd be lost forever without Him. Oh, let's be thankful. Let's not go along with those that may we work with, and if they start talking about something and putting down the government and all these restrictions and blah 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 and this and that and the other or my boss or are they you know and what they told me to do. you know how they can be sometimes oh, yeah. how any of us can be yeah. Yeah. let's take the high road right. Right. Sir, it's a yeah. and just start thanking the Lord for something yes. you know, or just yeah. change a conversation say well I'm going to be thankful for Jesus or I'm going to be thankful for God and right. God's good right. anyway and right. I thank for God that I've got health in my body right now. I'm not yeah. sick, and you know I can be at work yeah. today, or I don't know, just something. That's good. That's good. Turn it around. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure it's not easy for your boss man right now. I'm sure it's not easy for your yeah. business. You're no. dealing with all of this right now. And, you know, it's a tough time. It's not easy for our government no, it's not. to make decisions and know what to do. That's right. They, I'm sure they'd like to see the economy keep going. And sure. At the same time, they want to keep people safe. And yeah. you know, how do you balance that? And that's that's tough. Yeah. Would you want to be in their shoes? No. It's, it's big, big calls, big decisions. Right. You know, so they need our prayers. Yes, that's good preaching. Yeah, you're right. Let's be uh, good Christians, right? That are thankful and yeah. uh, lift up our officials in prayer, and yes. those that uh, are over us in prayer. 
Let's be different. Amen. Yeah. By the grace of God, right. we can be. If we walk in the Spirit each and every day, get out of that wilderness. Okay. Right. Start living in the victory. Right. That's good. Yeah. Stop following your tail. You ever seen a dog follow its tail? That's hilarious, isn't it? They run around in circles. But we believers can do the same thing. We must look that silly to God. Like a dog. You know? He's like, what are you doing? You know? Follow me. I've got something better for you. Now, I think there's a few examples we can look at in the Bible where there were those who were thankful during bad times. Let's look at a few of those, okay? Go with me back to Jonah. We mentioned Jonah, I think, last week. Let's look back there just for a moment at Jonah. Jonah went through a bad time, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. But really, it was his own fault. Right, yeah. A lot of times we go through bad times, but they're our own fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's of our own making. We made our bed, now we have to lie in it. You know, we, yes. we made the trouble, but, and now we have to deal with it. So it was a case with Jonah. He could have just gone straight to Nineveh, mm -hmm. yeah. but he took a detour. Yeah. Yeah. And sadly, many times we take a spiritual detour. Right. And now we have to learn a lesson, a hard lesson. Yes. But we didn't have to learn it that yeah. way. Right. If we just obeyed God the first time, oh, it would have gone so much easier for us. Right. <laughs> we wouldn't have to be in a whale. Yeah. <laughs> that slime and stomach acid and, and whatever. We'll pick it up here in verse 15, chapter 1. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. And then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. I guess so. And offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish so it was really a salvation of God, or it was a, uh, you know, very special thing that God did for Jonah. It was a way of showing him mercy. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. I don't think it was necessarily a whale like we would find. Uh, it was a special whale. I don't know. It was a prepared whale. I don't know what I don't know what prepared means there. Right, right. But all I know is it was prepared for Jonah. Somehow. Yeah. Someone could say, well, you could survive in a, a whale for three days. Maybe in Pinocchio you could, but not, <laughs> not in real life. You know? Remember Pinocchio? Yeah, I guess. And uh, Father Gi Geppetto, was it? Yes. Oh my His little ship. But yeah, we know that uh, couldn't yeah. happen today, but if God prepared it, it could happen, couldn't it? Right. God can do miracles. God can open the Red Sea. God can so true. do anything. Yeah. He can speak the worlds into existence, and God can say, let there be light, and boom, there's light. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So he could do this, right? Not a big deal for God. And so when Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, Verse 2, it said, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish. And you would do the same, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. If you weren't a prayer before now, you sure would be now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, Pastor, I pray. Oh, yeah. Pray all the time. After I got out of that well, I pray. All the time. <laughs> sure <laughs> That'll make no. you pray, won't it? Yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll put you guys in a well for a while. <laughs> then you'll start praying. Amen? Verse 2, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Now, I don't believe Jonah actually went to hell, but I'm sure it must have seemed much like hell. Yeah. Um, place of darkness. You know, we do read the Bible where it talks about outer darkness. You, you think of hell, you think of fire. Yeah. You think of light, right? You think of fire. Yeah. But I don't believe hell fire is the same as, as we know different. It could even be black fire. Maybe fire you can't even see. Yeah. The Bible talks about outer darkness. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I believe hell will be a dark place. Yeah. I believe the lake of fire will be a dark place. Not, not a light place. Yeah. Right. We're a God. We're in a place of light. 
God's all about light. Yes. Purity, glory, splendor. But not him. This is a place of darkness. He says, For thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about all thy billows, and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yea, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. By faith, amen. He looked again. It's what we can do when we're even in really bad times. Right. By faith, we can look towards the Lord, his holy temple. The waters could pass me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Notice verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Amen. And I will pay that with that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And right after this, it says, And the Lord spake unto the fish. Hey, fish. <laughs> And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Yeah. Maybe some things will happen when we get thankful. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Jonah was thankful. Even the whale's belly. Yeah. And you can't be thankful when you're above ground. When you can enjoy this beautiful day. Wow. That turkey dinner tomorrow. If I remember. <laughs> And you can be thankful. Right. God's been so good to you. Oh my. So I believe things can happen, amen, if we'll yeah. be thankful. Amen. Especially during the bad times. And this is a bad time. Yeah, yeah, it it's a difficult time. Yeah, it I don't think any of us could have saw this coming. Yeah. And that it would last this long. Right. I'm thinking, well, three months. You know, yeah. Yeah. Maybe four. <laughs> Six of the most. <laughs> yeah. We're still going. Yeah. Yeah. But God's still good. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Let's be thankful, like Amen. Jonah. Amen. Look at Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 with me. Daniel. Back a little bit to Daniel. Chapter number 6. Daniel's buddies didn't like him. Those guys that work with him in the kingdom. It says in verse 4, Then the presence of the princes sought to find occasion against him concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a good testimony? Yeah. For people trying to pick fault in your life as a Christian, but they can't find anything? Wow. I can't find anything wrong with this guy. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That's the way it was with Daniel. This guy, I can't find nothing wrong with him. He's such a good Christian. This guy, Matthew, he's just such a good Christian. You know? That's the way it should be. And so, because he was faithful, it says, Amen. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him, concerning the law of his God. So they wanted to use how he was faithful to God against him. So then these presidents and princes assemble together to the king, and you know they come for the king, they present the king, oh king, live forever, you know how they do back in the day. And uh, for 30 days, oh king, nobody shall ask anything of any body or any god besides you. Oh, it sounded so nice, didn't oh, right. it? And the king's like, oh, they love me. You know, and he fell for it. Yeah. Poor Daniel. He forgot about poor Daniel. Did Daniel change? No. 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 Did Daniel change with the times? No. no. Oh, you want us to stop worshiping God and worshiping Jesus and throw our Bibles away? No. Amen. We're not going to do it. Yes, sir. Right. Right. No. Right. Got to draw a line. Amen. Amen. We will serve our God. We will worship our God. We will stay true to our God no matter what happens amen, in this world. Or how wicked it gets or how much it turns against God. Or how secular it gets. 
Daniel didn't change. Amen. And so when Daniel knew, verse 10, that the writing was signed, he went into his house and hid in a corner. Right? Is that what it says? Yeah. He quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> and he quarantined for 14 days. No. He went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. He gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime, just like he did in the past. That's good. Nothing changed. All may remain the same. Even these days and these times, He's looking to God, worshiping Him, praising Him, thanking Him, believing in Him, trusting Him, right? right. Being faithful Amen. like Daniel, and giving thanks. We can do that. We can do this yes. Amen. by the grace of God. Yeah. This is where Daniel was throwing the lion's den. Daniel was like second to the king. He knew what was coming. This didn't hit him by surprise. Oh, you're going to throw me in the lions. No, no, he knew he was going to be thrown for the lions. He was one of the officials in the government. He knew all about, you know, what would happen to someone, the punishments and everything. And yet he did it anyway. Will we stand for Christ even though we may know in the future or what the cost may be? Right. We still stand. Will we stand even though we may be ridiculed or... What are you, some Bible thumper? What are you, right. some Jesus fanatic? What are you? You still going to stand? Right. That's it. Wow. Daniel did. Yeah. God saw him through it. Right. Amen. Shut their mouths. Yeah. I'm sure they were hungry lions, too. Yeah. They were so hungry. They wanted to eat him, but they couldn't eat him. Yeah. That's been an awful time, eh, for those lions. <laughs> those yeah. poor lions, eh? Yeah. Had to go a whole night and they couldn't eat him. They just they wanted to eat him so bad but they couldn't. You know? God can do great things for us too. He can see us through these times. Believe him, trust him. Right. He's still a God of miracles and he can do wonders. He's still the same God. He hasn't changed. He doesn't get old. Amen. Don't worry, you have to, you don't have to go easy on God, okay, because you think maybe he's older now. God, I'll make it easy on you today. You know? <laughs> no. You stand for Christ. And trust God. Do what's right. Please Him. Be wise about it. You know. Don't be nasty. Don't be mean. Be kind. Be gracious. Always. But let's stand for Him. Amen. Be thankful in these days. Just like Daniel. And then let's go to Acts chapter 16, another example of those who are thankful during bad times, difficult times. Acts chapter 16. Aren't we having a good time this morning? Yeah. I think good being in church. Yeah. I love being in church. It's the best. <laughs> if I had to go to a church where I couldn't have a good time, I'd just stop going. I'd find somewhere else to go. I'd look up another church. I don't know. There was no excitement there. There was, there was yeah. no, I don't know, love there. And right. just, the Lord. Know, the Lord wasn't there. Yeah. You know, if it was just all dead. And yeah. just had, had to pray about it. Lord, should I move? <laughs> yeah. I right. Amen. I, I'd want to move. Yeah. Me and my family, we drove over an hour to church for four years. Yeah. Every Sunday morning, we drove an hour, over an hour, to church. I love what Nick's doing. It took us about an hour and 15 minutes. About, about the same for you, right, Nick? About an hour and 15 or so? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we did that for four years because we wanted to find a, a good church, a decent church to go to. Not that our church is anything, but I'm just saying, yeah. I hope the Lord's here and that you're getting blessed and yeah. helped and encouraged in the Lord. That's my prayer. So, Acts chapter 16. Uh, beginning in verse number 22, notice what it says, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. So 
So it sounds like they're going through a hard time, eh? And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safe. Oh, what must these people have done? They must have done something terrible. All they did was come to town and tell some people about Jesus. You know? And uh, cast a demon out of a lady, you know? Uh, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Got everybody mad, got everybody upset. And in that jurisdiction, they could do these things. Not everywhere in the world are you innocent until proven guilty. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some places in the world you're guilty until proven innocent. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And they can do whatever they want to. Yeah. You know, that's the way it was back in the day. Here for Paul and Silas. And so it says, verse 24, who had received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. That's those, you know, wooden blocks, you know, they put their feet in and lock them up, you know. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. To give thanks means to give an expression of gratitude. Do you know what praise means? The expression of gratitude. For personal favors conferred. <laughs> they were thankful wow. to God. Could we do, do that even though we've been beaten? Uh, freedom taken, our liberty taken away from us? Right. Mistreated? Falsely accused? That we're bad people when we're not, or we're trying to follow God and do what's right and you know help people, and yet they're thinking we're something bad or you know, we want to hurt people and, you know, misunderstood. Yeah. Could we take that by the grace of God? Could we take that and pray and sing? Right. Yeah. Wow. Be happy in the Lord? Wow. But how is it some days we can't even do that and we're not in prison and we're not wow. being beaten and yeah. we're not being misunderstood and yeah. mistreated like Paul and Silas yeah. and yet we still can't pray and sing praises. Yeah. God help us. God help us. They prayed and sang praises unto God. Amen. And they got the prisoners' attention. Yes. I guess so. Right? Very unusual. God's people walking with Him are very unusual. Yeah. So true. Uh, it seemed like they kind of border on the. <laughs> because they're happy in the midst of trouble. Right, right. Have you lost your senses? <laughs> you know? But the world doesn't get it. They don't they don't see it from our perspective. They don't understand the joy and peace that we have on the inside. And that permeates us to the outside. Yes. Should if we're walking with God. And so yes, we can be happy even in bad times. And show the joy of the Lord. Right. That's right. We still have something to shout about, even though our outside our body might be hurting and you know yeah. we've been beaten or whatever, like Paul and Silas here. Inside they're feeling great. Right. Their spirit right. is feeling great. Yeah. Because they knew who they had done it for. Yeah. Right. Was for wow. him. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. And they were glad to do so. Yes, Amen. Hey. That's good. Someone wants to beat me for Jesus' sake? Right. Beat away. Amen. You know, they were glad to do that. Yeah. They saw it as a privilege. Right. They saw it as an honor. Wow. Oh, man. And so they could pray and sing. And we can do the same. Amen. Amen. No matter how tough it gets, God can give you a song. Amen. I know some of you have been through some tough times. You've been through some difficult times in your life where you've lost a loved one or you've you've had some sickness in your life it's been tough maybe you've experienced in those times when god gave you a song god gave you a song in the night Definitely. yes he's good to do that yes. god does it for his children yes he does so what should we do in the bad times 
Keep thanking God. Keep praising Him. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Amen. I want to be like those in the Bible who are thankful and praise God even in the bad times. Amen. Now this time I'd like to give you five reasons why I'm thankful for this time that we're living in of the pandemic. Okay? Five reasons. COVID in a good light today. Right, there you go. There you <laughs> There's so much bad stuff about COVID, COVID, COVID. Let's think it as in a, in a good light today. We can. By the grace of God, we can. We must. Because we're different. Because we have Jesus on the inside. Because of Him, we can. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. I've kind of touched briefly on this already, but we'll touch on it again. Because it goes with letter C. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10 and verse 24 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the sum of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. One reason why I'm thankful for this time of COVID is because it's helped me to appreciate church more. Aww. It's helped me to appreciate being with you more. Yes. Yeah. I think I, I've taken for granted, mm -hmm. you know, for a long time, yeah, too long. That, you know, church is always going to be there, yeah. and I'll get to be with you guys every Sunday or every service and that, and yeah. the times of fellowship that we would have, and yeah. the good times, and I, I still think about it, you know? Yeah. Um, of our home, and, yeah. and I see you guys, you know, around our island there, and us laughing and talking yeah. together, yeah. poking fun at each other, and, <laughs> you know, joking around, and stuffing our faces. <laughs> yeah. And, and I miss it, you know? Yeah. You guys are special. Amen. Every one of you. Amen. That's right. I'm loving the Lord. Don't you know that? Even you, Matthew. <laughs> Even though I forget you sometimes. Yeah. Amen. Thank God for church. Yes. Amen. May we appreciate it more. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I don't know even how long we're going to stay like this right now. Yeah, I know. They could even, you know kick us out and say, hey, you know, we got to shut down again. Yeah. If it comes to that, it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to accept it, right? It's God's will. Right. But uh, we'll enjoy it while we can. That's right. And be thankful for it. You know? Yeah. I would like to uh, do some kind of mailing or something in the paper and, you know, do some advertisements in that. I'd, I'd like to do something, spend some money. <laughs> Got a few thousand in the bank, not very much, but we got a few thousand. And so I'd like, there's this thing I would like to do, but I really don't want to do that until I know that we're back in here, you know, kind of right, yeah. permanently, yeah. sort of, kind of, semi permanent. Yeah. yeah. So pray for me about that. I am willing to spend the money we have, I really am. I, I'm not just storing it away. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe some of you wonder, what is he doing with all that money? But it, it's, it's there for the Lord, it's not my money, it's God's money. And it will be used. Whether it's given to missions or it's given to, to Cornwall or to serve the Lord here or something or get the gospel out, it's, it's going to be used. So you pray for me. But the church, oh, we can be thankful more for the church, I think, since COVID. Don't you think? I think since then. We appreciate it more now than we did before. That's a good thing. God's done that in our heart. That's good. It's good for us to think of COVID in a good light. Amen. There's some good things that have come out of it. Yes. Another good thing, if you go meet the book of Acts, look at Acts chapter 5, verse 12. 
Acts chapter 5, verse 12. It says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And that was just like a big meeting place there in uh, Jerusalem. Now the rest, there's no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they were brought forth, they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities uh, round about the Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed everyone. Wouldn't it be a blessing if we could do that today? Oh, yeah. But we're not living in the times of the apostles and we don't have the power the apostles had at the beginning of the church period. That was a very special time. Yeah. And the Apostle Paul was the last of the Apostles. But we have been able to reach out and to show love and care for our community. So, and we can share the Gospel and that we know brings healing to the soul, to the heart, right? And we've been able to do that. We've given out lots of tracts. And uh, so, opportunity. Right, I would say. Right. Uh, and thank you for the opportunities God has given us during COVID. Amen. Absolutely. I thank uh, again Brother Joe and Miss Ellen for all the work they've done with the mask. Yeah. I mean, you know, we yeah. first this hit us, you know, back in March. You know, we got on it right away. We were one of the first ones, you know, in our community giving out free masks to all of our health workers. So true. And they were very well received in yeah. the nursing homes and, and that. And so, yeah, that's been a great blessing. Yeah. And we give out a lot of tracts. And, and so it's been our way to show love to our community. Yeah. It's been a great thing. It's been a really good thing. And who knows in the future, other opportunities God may give us yeah. Yeah. You know, to show more love to our community. Yeah. That's a good thing that's come out of COVID. Yeah. Yes. We should be thankful for that. Yeah. Great opportunity. And I, I want to do it more for our community. I want to show more that, that we love them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're not looking down our nose. We're not, you know, no. eh, you sinners. No. 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 Not at all. Yeah. It's not like that at all. No. Right. We're not better than nobody. No. 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 If anything, we're worse. Yeah. yeah. We're just yeah. saved by the grace of God. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And then another thing in Matthew chapter 24. Has this been a long message or is it just me? I hope it's been good though. I gotta hurry. <laughs> Alright, Matthew, I just looked at the all right, wow. Uh, Matthew 24, verses 6 through 8. Uh, well, you're getting your money's worth today, right? Yeah. There you go. It's Thanksgiving. I want to make sure you got your money's worth. Matthew 24, verse 6 through 8 says, And you should hear of wars and rumors of wars, so that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. God says, Hey, I told you this is coming. But the end is not yet, for a nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences. Pestilences. COVID. Yep. There it is right there in the Bible. And earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So the point I want to make here is the vindication. Vindication. What we see here is Bible prophecy coming to pass in our own lifetime. Amen. <laughs> How long? I've, I've read these verses all my life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they really are. yeah. And I never yeah. knew that I would actually probably be living through right. it. Right. Yeah. But I am. I, I'm there. I'm there in verse 7. You're in there yeah. in verse 7. Yeah. Matthew 24, 7. We're living it today. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Vindication. The Bible is 
continuing to come to pass yeah. before our very eyes. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. It is. Amen. Yes. I like it. Yes. Even though, you know, COVID and everything, but it's it's good. It's a good Amen. thing. It's vindication. Amen. And then uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Real quick. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 32 says... And the multitude of them that believe were one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they are all things common. Now the interesting thing about this, this passage and why I'm using it is I, I think I see with COVID and all that's been happening is how this is preparing us for the future, what's down the road, yeah. uh, what we could be facing, and how things could even get worse than this. We don't know. Right. Right? And how we are going to have to become more flexible as God's people yeah, and make good. changes. That's right. I don't know. What, will we one day have to live like the Waltons, all live in one house? You know, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Or have like one truck, you know? And yeah. Each have a plate and a fork. And, I don't know. Could it happen? I don't know. But we are family, right? And we're going to look after each other. No matter what happens, we're going to pull together. Right. You know, and even now, if you need me, you need our family. I mean, things get so bad, whatever. I know some of you are in and out of jobs. And you don't know what's happening. Jobs are shutting down. They're just starting up again, and you, you don't, you know what's going to happen, right? If, if you need some help, if you need a place to stay, or you know, if it gets that bad or whatever, you know, I want to help. We want to help because we're family, right? We pull together. I know we're, we're used to in our society, especially in North America, yeah. we're, we're so blessed. You know, we have our own houses, our own right, right. private lives, yeah. you know, we live. But in most places, a lot of places in the world, they don't live that way. Third world countries, they don't live, everybody lives in the same house or whatever, and they all share. Right. And, you know, they got one little moped or one little bike or something. Right. But we live like kings here, yeah. really. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're so blessed. Yeah. But I believe COVID is kind of preparing us for yeah. something Definitely. down the road and but God will be there, no matter you know what happens. He'll be there. Yes. He'll yeah. be there in the future, giving us grace and helping yeah. us, right, to deal with whatever happens. Right. But I believe it does give us some insight, it does. Yeah. you know, to the future. Yeah, it does. We will have to be more flexible. Yeah. Who knows? The church may have to go underground in the future. We don't know. I don't know. Whatever has to happen, right? What are we live through? I don't know exactly what we're going to live through. I don't know how bad it's going to get before the Antichrist comes. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. But I know God's grace will be there. Amen. And if it's His will for us to experience it, like it is His will right now for COVID, yeah. He'll give us a grace for it. Yeah. He'll be there with us. But let's take this insight, I believe, that we have right now and think about this and be kind of prepare ourselves, you know? Right. To trust God no matter what. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not just like, you know, kind of lose it and like, oh, my life, my life is falling apart and, you know, I can't have this and I can't have that. And, uh, maybe not. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, we may not always have to be able to live the way we're living. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Hopefully our economy comes back and we're okay. But mm -hmm. if not, we got to trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are we trust in God or are we trusting our bank account? Must be in the Lord. Yeah. 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 Money can't save you. That's why you need Christ. The government can't save you. Sorry to tell you. We respect the government. Thank God for the government. But it's not our salvation. Governments rise and fall. You do know that. You take some history classes. Yeah. They go woo, 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 throughout history. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Right. Right. Put your confidence in Him. Amen. Yeah. And the last thing uh, concerning death, of course, it certainly made us think about death. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, made us think about our own mortality. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good thing. It is. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. 
make sure you're saved. That's good. Are you ready to die today? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Amen. So COVID has been a good thing, hasn't it? Yes. It's helped us appreciate things more, uh, think about things uh, more in a serious way like we should, and so that's good. It's all good. Amen. We have so much to be thankful for. Yeah.